Hello, grace and peace be with you. I'm Elizabeth Webb, Chair of the Stewardship Ministry at Decatur Presbyterian Church, and I'm coming to you to make sure that you are aware of our 2022 stewardship campaign. Our theme this year is All In, because we need everyone in the Decatur Presbyterian Church congregation and community to go all in to support the ministries of DPC as we rise to meet the challenges of our time. During the past 19 months of the pandemic, we have lost many precious stalwart members and leaders and contributors to this church. With their passing, one era is ending. We must step up and go all in in order to take up their mantle and carry on with the ministries that they have supported so long and so well. Our goal is to raise $1,306,501 to support a balanced budget that fully funds our ministries and provides staff with a 3% raise. We will do this by increasing the number and percentage of active members engaged in regular monthly giving. We will do this by inspiring our college students and young adults to begin giving a small amount each month. And finally, we will do this by inspiring our regular generous donors to consider increasing their giving significantly to meet the challenge. We know that stewardship is not a campaign. We know that it is a spiritual practice that we are called to by Christ himself. In that light, let's reflect on who we are today and the work that this church has done over the past 196 years. Our mission is to share the love of Jesus Christ with the world. Our bicentennial goal for 2025 is every child of God belonging, engaging, and being transformed. To achieve our mission and our goal, we are seeking to implement five different strategies, the first of which is welcoming and engaging people of all ages and backgrounds. The second is implementing courageous outreach efforts to engage new people with the church community. The third is caring compassionately for those struggling with life circumstances, including those living on the margins of society or as Reverend Rogers so eloquently preached in a recent sermon, those on the edge. Number four of our strategies is intentionally building relationships within the church community. And five is faithful stewardship of human, financial and capital resources, inspiring generosity and sustainability. Each one of these challenges is more important than ever during this pandemic and has been more challenging than ever to perform. Considering where we are, let's look back on our history and where we've come from. October 30th, 1825, the first worship service was held. The church at that time was Westminster Pres and had eight members. In 1827, the name was changed to Decatur Presbyterian Church as the Georgia legislature incorporated the church as the first corporation in the county of DeKalb. DeKalb County still is proud to call Decatur Presbyterian Church the oldest corporation still in existence. Over the years, this church has founded 17 other Presbyterian churches, starting with First Pres of Atlanta in 1848, continuing with Oakhurst Pres Presbyterian in 1921, and culminating with Crossroads, Crossroads Presbyterian in 1974. Think about the great work that all of those churches have done and continue to do. We have shared worship facilities with a number of congregations over the years, congregations that were hoping to build a church or congregations that were struggling and looking for the way forward. Most notably, we've shared our facilities with our friends who went on to found Decatur First Baptist Church, 
which worshiped in their facility for the first time in 1870 after sharing ours for many years. In 1889, Dr. Frank Henry Gaines, pastor of Decatur Presbyterian Church, wrote that Decatur Presbyterian was a fine body of people and had an able session that recognized the need for more adequate school in Decatur. Decatur Presbyterian went on to found Decatur Female Seminary with the generous support of Colonel George Washington Scott. That little school went on to become Agnes Scott College in 1906, today one of the seven sisters of the South and a leader in women's education in the United States and in the world. Diverse women from all backgrounds are educated there every year, over a thousand women every year. This focus on education for women and girls continues to this day since 19, 2000, excuse me, since 2009, Decatur Presbyterian has provided a home for the Global Village Project, the only school in the United States dedicated to meeting the educational needs of refugee young women and preparing them to enter high school. In 1913, Troop Number no. One, Boy Scout Troop Number no. One, was started here at Decatur Presbyterian Church, the first Boy Scout troop in Georgia. In 1950, we began the first kindergarten and nursery school, today Decatur Presbyterian Children's Community, where I, by the way, attended as a five-year-old. Importantly, in 1957, on November 11th, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution published a manifesto on racial beliefs that the senior pastor of this church, Dr. J. Davison Phillips, signed along with 79 other white Presbyterian ministers from around this, the Atlanta. These ministers stood up and declared their belief and their opposition to the hatred, defiance, and violence that had followed the Supreme Court's granting of full privileges of first-class citizenship to black Americans through the Brown versus Board of Education decision. A brave act. Today, Decatur Presbyterian continues as a Matthew 25 church, seeking to be a vital congregation that energetically engages in dismantling systemic racism and structural poverty. We were instrumental in helping to found the Decatur Cooperative Ministry in 1969, Phillips Towers in 1971, Decatur Emergency Assistance Ministry in 1977, the DeKalb Rape Crisis Center in 1991. In 1991, we also began our regular mission trips to Honduras, where we have ceaselessly sought to improve living conditions and the uh, well-being of the people of Honduras. We have supported reforestation work in Madagascar, work reaching out to untouchables in India, the building of the Topol Hospital in South Korea. The establishment of the Young Singers of Kallenwald. We sent missionaries to China who nurtured a China scholar who went on to become president of Agnes Scott College, Mary Brown Bullock. We support ministry work on the U.S.-Mexico border in Africa and in many other places. These are but examples of all of the work that this church has done and continues to do. We are called to be a blessing to others. As I close this Minute for Mission, talking about our 2022 stewardship campaign, I would like to ask you to join me in prayer, a prayer written by one of the saints of this church, Mrs. Scott Candler, Jr. As we look back on the years of efforts, we pray that God will bless that which has been good and forgive that which has been weak or wrong, and that through the help of the Holy Spirit, He will lead us into greater commitment to Him. Amen and amen.